Leia here from leiaforsci.com slash mcat and in this video I'm going to show you how to convert a sugar in a Fisher projection to a Hayworth projection and a chair confirmation. You can find my entire series on Fisher projections along with my practice quiz and cheat sheet by visiting my website leiaforsci.com slash Fisher. Knowing how to convert between Fisher, Hayworth and chairs is a critical skill for the MCAT not just the drawing, but actually recognizing how the structure should look when you convert it so that you don't have to waste any time doing the actual drawing on your exam. But to learn how to recognize it, you actually have to take the time and learn how to draw it, learn the patterns to look out for, and then you can use a shortcut to save time. Let's start with the Fisher projection for D-glucose. Recognize that D-glucose is a D-aldohexose which means it has an aldehyde at the end, it has six carbons, and the ose means it's sugar. The trick for recognizing glucose, especially D, is that you simply alternate right, left, right, and then D means that it goes on the right. So we have an OH on the right, an OH on the left, an OH on the right, and then an OH on the right for the D, L is on the left, and then obviously everything is reversed for L. I'm purposely keeping the colors different for the right and the left because that will be the key behind the trick. So I want you to be able to differentiate the groups. And the final carbon is just a CH2OH. Carbons 1 and 6 are achiral, so they're not written out in the Fisher projection form. But carbons 2 through 5 are, and that's why we have it drawn out this way. Since aldehyde is higher priority, we start counting from the top. And without going through the complete reaction, I want you to simply recognize that to convert between the Fisher or linear form to the Hayworth or cyclic form, the OH on carbon 5 is the one that attacks. So the OH will attack the carbonyl carbon, kick up the bond between carbon and oxygen, making that an O, which gets protonated to an OH. And the OH that forms can be facing forward or rear. And that's because the aldehyde has an sp2 hybridized carbon. And if it's attacked from one side, you get the alpha. If it's attacked from the other side, you get the beta. But the reaction is still the same. And for the trick, it doesn't matter which one you want to use. Let's look at it from the side to make sure that you understand. But keep in mind, you can't just rotate a Fisher projection 90 degrees. You're going to get the enantiomer. But for the sake of the trick, it doesn't matter because the trick will still have the entire molecule fall into place. I turned everything 90 degrees so I can see what's going on, but then I'll show you the trick that lets you avoid this turn. We have an aldehyde on the right, that's carbon number 1. We have the CH2OH on the left, that's carbon number 6. And now let's look at carbons 2 through 5. And the trick is, we're going to take all the purple carbons and drop them right down. Whatever's on the right is going to be down. So we have an OH on carbon 2, H on 3, OH on 4, OH on 5. And whatever did not wind up on the right side will be left up, meaning the left side stays up. Carbon 2 gets a hydrogen, 3 OH, 4 hydrogen, and 5 hydrogen. Now look at the attack again. The OH on carbon 5 reaches around, the entire molecule swings around so that the OH attacks the carbon. The carbonyl now has just a single bond between carbon and oxygen, making that an another OH. And now let's see how to draw that ring or the Hayward projection. We'll start the structure by looking at the bond between carbons 2 and 3. So we'll draw a line to represent the bonds between 2 and 3 and then we'll wrap the entire molecule around it. So I want you to imagine that this attack here happens where the molecule swings around towards the back. So that 2 and 3 are the two forwardmost carbons, and everything else is into the page, meaning it wraps around the back of the molecule. Attached to carbon 2 on the right, we have carbon number 1. Carbon number 1 got attacked by the oxygen from carbon number 5. So let's swap that out for red oxygen and show that over here. On the other side, we have carbon number 3 is attached to carbon 4, 4 is attached to 5, 5 is attached to the oxygen which did the attack. Let's make it bigger so we can see where all the substituents go and add them in. For carbons 2 and 3, nothing changed. We have an OH down on 2, 
hydrogen down on 3, hydrogen up on 2, and OH up on 3. Carbon 4 is also the same, but it's slightly off to the side. We have an OH going down and a hydrogen going up. Carbon 1 can be up or down depending on alpha or beta. I like to think of them as follows. When I draw alpha, it goes down. It has a tail that goes down, and it kind of looks like a fish, which is down in the sea. And then beta has a really big head. The head goes up, kind of like a bird that flies high. So if we put the OH up, it'll be a beta glucose. If we put the OH down, it'll be an alpha, or in this case, an alpha D glucose. For the sake of keeping it generic, we'll put the OH out to the side, meaning it's not up or down, and I'll just put in a hydrogen, and I'm drawing a squiggly line to show that it could be up or down, but for this molecule, we don't care. Carbon-5 is the tricky one. When I learned this in biochem, we were taught that the molecule twists and you have to look at the chirality this way and that way, and honestly, it's, it's too tedious to follow. So what I want you to think of is this. Everything that we saw so far stayed the same. We used the trick to drop it right down, and the rest got left up. Right down, left up. For carbon-6, which is attached to carbon-5, we're going to put 6 opposite where the OH was. The OH is on the right, meaning it would be dropped right down, and that means if CH2OH is opposite, that will be left up, and that is CH2OH. And I want you to think of it this way, rather than memorizing with beta D glucose, the OH and the CH2OH are on the same side, alpha D glucose, CH2OH, and OH are opposite. That mnemonic works but if you're given a molecule that's a little different, or for example, not a glucose, it gets confusing. But if you can look at the Fisher projection and recognize that the CH2OH, which is carbon-6, sitting on 5, is going to be opposite of where that OH was because it twisted in the attack, you'll know if the OH would have been dropped right down, the CH2OH stays up, and that means the default, the hydrogen goes down. This was a long and tedious method, and on the MCAT, you don't have time for this. You don't want to draw it. You don't want to waste that kind of time. So now let's use the same trick without rewriting it sideways. Now let's look at how to go straight from the Fisher to the Hayworth. So here we have d glucose again, and we're going to draw a six-membered ring with an oxygen upright. We then number it so that carbons two and three are the two forward most carbons that you see. One is towards the right, and then just continue around the circle. And now let's add the substituents. For carbons 2, 3, and 4, we drop it right down. 2 gets an OH down, 3 gets an H, 4 gets an OH. For the other side, the green substituents are left up. Hydrogen up on 2, OH up on 3, hydrogen up on 4. And carbon 6 goes opposite where the OH on carbon 5 would have gone. The oxygen on carbon 5 did the attack that's in the ring. If the OH would have been dropped right down, the CH2OH gets left up. And that means we have a hydrogen going down. Last but not least, see if the molecule asks for alpha or beta, and then put your OH on carbon 1 accordingly with a hydrogen opposite. If OH is up for beta, hydrogen is down. If OH is down for alpha, hydrogen is up. So that's the Hayworth. Now let's see how to turn this into a chair confirmation. The first thing you have to do is be very comfortable with chairs. I have a detailed tutorial for this on my website. The link is in the description, but we'll do the quick overview here. We want to start with a basic chair skeleton, but because it's a sugar, we want an oxygen here. I like to have the substituents go down from the oxygen. That means here we have the parallel line. This side is the opening, right? That's the opening right there. So we have the carbon going down. And on this side, we have the carbon going up. The numbering works the same way. So you start at the oxygen, and then clockwise we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 6 will be a substituent. And then just like with the Fisher to the Hayworth, we're going to take the right side from 2 to 4 and drop it right down. But here you have to be careful because in a chair conformation, you have your axial and equatorial substituents. 
So let's put the skeleton lines first so we know where we have axials up and down and where we have equatorials up and down. And again, this is covered in detail in my tutorial, the link's in the description. Right, so now we know where the pieces are going to go, let's fill them in. Carbons 2, 3, and 4 get dropped right down, so the purple substituents on the right will go down. 2 gets an OH down, which winds up equatorial. 3 gets a hydrogen down, it winds up axial. 4 gets an OH down, winds up equatorial. On the same carbons, we have the green substituents that get left up, so hydrogen axial up on 2, OH equatorial up on 3, hydrogen axial up on 4, and then carbon 6 is opposite the OH on 5. The OH would have been dropped right down, so the CH2OH gets left up, and look at that. It winds up equatorial, which means we have a hydrogen down. Now for the sake of this molecule, let's show beta glucose and the reason I'm showing this is this sheer conformation helps you understand why glucose is so stable in its cyclic form. In this molecule every single OH group including the CH2OH wind up equatorial making it very very stable and the tiny hydrogen atoms are axial so you don't have many unfavorable diaxial interactions going on. Since these are six membered rings they're called Pyranose, and this represents a six-membered ring sugar, where it's not six carbons, but instead it's a heterocycle because you have an oxygen in the ring. But what happens if you start with a molecule like D-fructose, which gives you a five-membered ring? D-fructose is a ketohexose. That's because it's a ketone on a hex six ose sugar. Carbons one and six are both CH2OH. And the carbonyl occurs at carbon 2, which is not chiral, but we still show it on a Fischer rejection so that we can have the rest of the molecule flow the same way as we did with D-glucose, which is an isomer of D-fructose. On D-fructose, we only have three chiral carbons, carbons 3, 4, and 5, and they follow the same pattern as glucose. That's another reason I draw this on the right, because it reminds me of the pattern. OH to the right, OH to the left. OH to the right, and then D means the last one is OH to the right. Fill in the hydrogens for the rest, and that's D fructose. The trick for a five membered furanose is the same as a six membered pyranose, except we draw a five membered ring instead of six. So we have a five membered ring with the oxygen on top, and the numbering is also different. For this molecule, we have three and four rather than two and three as the carbons that we look at. And the reaction here, once again, is the oxygen on carbon 5 swinging around to attack the carbonyl on carbon 2. So the anomeric carbon here is carbon 2, and that's the one that can go up and down. Carbon 5 did the attack, so it's still attached to the oxygen that attacked, and carbon 6 will come off of carbon 5. The only carbons that actually stay the same are 3 and 4. So 3 and 4 will be dropped right down. That means we have a right down hydrogen on 3, or write down OH on 4. The other side gets left up, so we have an OH up on 3, hydrogen up on 4. And what about the rest of the molecule? Just like with a pyranose, the CH2OH on carbon 5 will be opposite where the OH was. If the OH would have been dropped right down, the CH2OH will be left up, and that means we have a hydrogen going down. And carbon 2 will vary depending on if we get alpha or beta, depending on the direction of the attack. So in this case, we'll just show a squiggly line. But it's not just the OH that we're showing. We're also looking at the CH2OH coming off of that carbon. So one of the groups will be a CH2OH, and the other group will be an OH, where the OH is what tells you alpha or beta, where alpha is down and beta is up and the CH2OH simply goes in the opposite direction. And that concludes this series on Fisher projections. If you feel confident with the material, make sure you try the practice quiz, which you can find on my website along with this entire series and cheat sheet, layerforsci.com slash Fisher. And don't forget to subscribe and to share this series with all your pre-med friends so that they too can learn this trick and save some time on their MCAT.